Hi everybody, welcome to Cambridge, Massachusetts. My name is Dave Vellante. We're here at the 18th annual CDO IQ event, the premier event in the world for Chief, Chief Data Officers. This is theCUBE's eighth time participating in this event. We're here in Cambridge, Massachusetts at the Hyatt Regency overlooking uh, the Charles River. I'm really excited to welcome two guests, uh, Rich Wang, who is the founder of this event, a former MIT professor uh, and somebody who's been very active in this community for a number of years, the better part of two decades. Rich, great to see you again. Thanks so Thank much for, for having the queue back mm -hmm. at this event. And Sanjeev Mohan, Sanjmo, uh, member of the Cube Collective, friend of the Cube, and somebody who's going to be co-hosting with me uh, this week. I just want to set up. So this is the 18th annual event. Yes. Um, tell us how it got started. It started from 1988, when I was a young professor at MIT Sloan School of Management. Uh, from TQM, Total Quality Management, we thought that data is a product. So I added D into it, or TTQM. And it's Professor Manning and I started. And so in the 1990s, we had the entire data quality industry and IQ industry. And turn to 2000, it became mature, have mentioned acquisition. I, myself, uh, have heard a lot of war stories that the data quality uh, managers, they don't get budget. Hmm. So it was a constant problem until I went to Pentagon. And in Pentagon in August, you see people say, who wants $2 million? And then who wants $1 million? It's called hide our money. And I realized that down on me that the, that's where the money is. So I had the first MIT and Army CDO forum in Crystal City. For those people who know uh, Washington, that's where sure. all the work is done. Right. And only 28 to 35 people came, but among them, one guy from IBM, one from Gartner Group, and many of General, and, and those people went back. IBM right. started a business, Gartner started a business, <laughs> and then they helped to expand this, and we were persistent, and a lot of uh, energy goes into it, so before we realized it's 2024. So, we first uh, came, the Cube first came to uh, CDO IQ in 2013, when it was at the Tang Center in, in MIT. Yes. And it's, it's, it, was, it was growing beyond the 30 people that were there in, <laughs> in 1988, uh, and it's grown substantially since then. And now you have basically taken over this, this hotel. How many people are here this year? How many do it's you expect? It's a price, I ordered 600 of this, as well as 600 bags. <laughs> and I was expecting 500. Don't tell Hyatt, I think they have five calls, that's 550 people. <laughs> we locked 730 people as of last night. On wow. site. Wow, on congratulations. Site. And, and, and not counting uh, virtual. virtual across the world, so it's more than 2,000 people attending. And it's very important, each and every person who either on site or around the world, them themselves are like Sanjeev, it's a data leader. So in here, you bump into Sanjeev, over here, Doug Lenny, over there, Tom Davenport. Yeah. It's an intense it's team an and, and, and yes. things, so. So Sanjeev, I wonder if we could talk about the sort of the journey of yeah. the, the sort of data quality yeah. uh, uh, initiatives mm -hmm. and the roles of the CDO, which kind of emerged post uh, the, the original conference. It was a back office. Data quality was a back office function, yeah. you know. Right. Like, like Rich said, <laughs> nobody could get any money for it. But of course, it was it's, it was crucial then. It's even more crucial now. But and then, you know, the the big data era mm -hmm. uh, uh, ascended, mm -hmm. and then we saw the rise of the chief data officer. But as we've talked about, the, the technical wonks kind of took over. Yeah. Um, and governance was sort of an afterthought. It was kind of bolted on, and that's not the case today with AI. How, how do you see that journey? of data quality in the CDO. Yeah, yeah. so I, I want to share two very interesting factoids uh, on both CDO and data quality, but I just want to go back to, so you started at Tang Center. I never went to that. I was, I started attending when you mm. were in inside MIT's campus mm. at the CCL building. The computer CCL, science and computer yeah, science, yeah. computer science and AI lab, which is the yeah. birthplace of mm. many of the AI, AI technologies. Yes. So very iconic building, yeah. and that's where we used to be a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. So yeah, so now now here we are in height. Okay, so a bunch of things are happening. Why is data quality all of a sudden so important? Is because now we have come to a realization: if we are going to get any benefit out of Gen AI, because Gen AI is not 
like any other project, it's a very capital intensive project. So when you're gonna make that much investment, mm -hmm. you better get good results. So data quality is, has bubbled up to be the, the blocker uh, in this space, but it's not just data quality of yester years, it is data quality on unstructured data as well. And what is that data quality? How do you define what is the data quality of a document? So, so this is the this is a reason why data quality has become a complex topic now. Because in structured data, we can say is it duplicate data, is it missing data, is a format correct, all of that uh, metrics. But for unstructured, the metrics are undefined. Yeah. So, so, so data quality, from a data warehouse standpoint, might be you want a consistent definition of some correct. some metric. Correct. Uh, and and yeah. and now, as you say, it's yeah. how do you interpret all this unstructured data? You know, I, I want to I want to share some of the 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 guests that we've had. Just to, to the audience, Rich, you touched on this. Uh, you bump into Sanjeev, you bump into Tom Davenport, Mario Faria. This is the CDOs, the top CDOs in the world. We, as I say, this is our eighth year. We have done 130 videos. We've had over 150 guests. We have a thousand short videos, little clips that we've made from those guests. Mario Faria, who's coming hmm. on again this week. Tom Davenport's been on. We should try to get him again. We have had famous people like Michael Stonebreaker, uh, Sandy Petlin came on. He was talking about early days of crypto. Hmm. He was educating the audience on, on, on cryptography and, and cryptocurrency and how that all worked. Bill Inman, the father of uh, the data warehouse. Uh, um, now, just so you, you know, we had many women on too. Micheline Casey from the Federal Reserve, uh, Jeannie Ross, who's a research scientist at MIT. She shared some amazing research. You mentioned IBM, Bob Picciano. I don't know if you remember yes. Bob, keynoted yeah. one, one year. Stuart Madnick, you mentioned, yeah. of course, Stuart's been super supportive. Uh, Derek Strauss uh, from TD Ameritrade, who was uh, one of the early chief data officers. Yeah. Just to name a very, very small selection of the type of, the quality of the type of people are here. Rich, now this year you have, um, and you may have done this in previous years, you've got a public sector section that's yes. exclusive, exclusive, and then downstairs you've got sort of the commercial sector. Can you explain that? Well, the first reason is because Thai is small, you have no space. <laughs> and I found this space, so I said, track A comes over here, and public sector is important. We got 100, more than 120 people signed up and we have all the agencies thanks to SAIC to to invite the speakers so when you see the signs on, on the opening remark those are speakers hmm. okay from all the important government agencies so that that's a that's the first reason in terms of distribution upstairs and downstairs and it's a little bit separate so to speak and the second reason is uh, for special public sector this year is because Last year, the rumor went that there's a lot of money uh, that's going to be distributed to the public sector in, the, I don't know, I make it up, Homeland Security, IRS, and the, you know, there's a lot of demand now. They recognize data is important. They put in a lot of money. So uh, several sponsors came to me and said, can we have one uh, track? Of, you know, and so SIC took the lead, and they did a fantastic job. Uh, without mm -hmm. them, we wouldn't be able to have this. So, so that's the, the the role of, of the CDO first came to fore in the highly regulated yeah. industries. It was public sector, it was healthcare, it was financial services, uh, and then it sort of spread mm. to, to more commercial industries. Now, Sanjeev, you're hearing the, the chief AI officer. Yeah. So you've got the CIO, you've got the CDO, you've got the chief AI officer. How do you see the relationship between those roles? Does the CDO become the de facto chief AI officer? Uh, is it a new role that emerges? I, I know it'll be different in different organizations, but what are you seeing? So, uh, you know, earlier on when I said the two factor, actually I want to talk about CDO because I find the CDO role is still a bit problematic. I don't mm. know how you see it. And the reason I'm saying this is because let's say an organization has a CFO and for some reason that job goes away, M&A happens or the company just for some reason. The CFO can now go look for other CFO openings and apply and uh, hopefully he or she can get hired. But the CDO cannot because no two CDOs are doing the same job. <laughs> So when you say, is CDO going to uh, chief AI officer, it depends. Some companies, CDOs, are completely focused on risk and governance. They're not going to AI role. 
because their focus is completely different. They're more into security and governance and data access. But some CDOs are more focused on analytics. Yes, they can move to the AI role. So this is uh, the irony about the CDO role that there's no clear definition. I, I, right, if I could build on that, and that's why I started a CDO certification program with a mm. very rigorous program for 15 months, and it's like a uh, they were camp for all the people, and I have all the subject matter experts for the, the, the multiple. And the key here is we have now come, uh, the, come to the common understanding that whether it's called CDO, or CAO, or CDA, or CDTO, or CDTAIO. Yes. We broadly define all of them to be chief data officer. Okay, in one sense, in the other sense that people have come to understanding is there are actually two, com two sides of CDO function. One is called defensive side, produce high quality hmm. data. There's another offensive side called general revenues. Hmm. The moment you start to create some good data, the CEO would ask you to general revenue. 30% of company revenue could be on the shoulder of a CDO. So it requires different kinds of uh, CDOs with different kinds of skill set. I joke that this, uh, the CDO in this era is pretty much like CIO in the 1980s. If you remember CIO, what the CIO stand for? Yeah, uh, career is over. Career is over. Yeah. They get 18 months, they're gone. And that's because it's ill defined. So one of my current mission is to try to nail it down and say, you know, here is a certified CDO, they all go through this training. And we then branch out to say, yeah. this is, go ahead. So I want to ask you a question. So th I'm very happy to hear that you are defining, you're putting some boundaries around yeah. the CDO role. Mm -hmm. But then if you look beyond the CDO role, who does the CDO report to? See, that's also a big confusion. Some report to CFO, some report to CIO, some report to CEO. Is that uh, part of your remit to kind of give some guidance as to no. where? I see. Uh, once again, I, I am a firm believer of visible of market, the invisible hand. So there hmm. are some companies, CDO reports to CIO, and fortunately and unfortunately, they still report to CIO because it's the easiest place. Hmm. Some smart companies still say C CDO reports to CEO, mm -hmm. but ultimately, this was sort out over time. That time, time is the best author. It will define right, a, right. a good story. So in the end, I see it's the pendulum was starting from like, like CIO called centralization to decentralization and come back to recentralization, right. similar here for and, CDO. And you get a lot of questions, we get a lot of questions, so should we have a chief uh, AI officer? Hmm. And to your point, it depends, right? So it, your governance, we've talked about this, some companies like AWS, for example, puts governance really in data management, yeah. right? Not in AI, other companies put Correct. You know, governance yeah. directly associated yes. with AI. So if you're the, the, the latter, Right. of those sort of two, it yeah. might be, it might make sense to make the CDO the de facto chief data, chief data and AI officer. Right. You know, almost like Databricks, you know, right. their conference. So right. I can see it working both ways. But mm -hmm. your point, Rich, is it, it really does depend. The organization has to make that decision. You're not prescribing a particular organizational strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to peel the onion a little bit deeper to mm -hmm. understand what fits best within yeah. your organization, within your industry, your growth plans, et cetera, is that yes, right? Yes, that's correct. So, so I always say that go with the flow. If a company, a <laughs> CEO says, I need an AI officer, please create an AI officer. And then the AI officer of, all of a sudden realize that the garbage in, garbage out. And then they will go back and say, well, I need someone to create high quality. So it goes that direction. There are other companies like GSK, the well established foundation for data management already. So they would have CTOs that have come, come out and say, we need to do AI, I say, okay, fine, we'll have a branch for AI. And for AI data analytics, I have a standard answer as well, which is let's start a center of excellence. Data management enterprise-wide. In AI, you don't have every department. If you're not careful, major companies, especially CFO and CMO, they have budget, you will end up a CAI office in each department. Hmm which is not good. So a center of excellence may be the way to go in, in, in the end, and maybe on top of the head, it's either the AI office or the data office, I don't care. And that would be a way to make them co more coherent. And you see federated models emerging as well. You certainly saw that inside of IBM where they had chief data officers you know, uh, Inderpal Bandari, for example, yes. was the chief data officer, and then they yeah. had others within the divisions. Yeah. You're seeing that 
you know, emerge some of those models, those yeah. federated models with, with AI as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then the other question we get a lot is, should we bring somebody on who's technical mm -hmm. in that role, or should we bring somebody on who's more, you know, curious? And uh, yeah. yeah, I lean toward the latter, really. I, I lean toward the former. You do, excellent, okay, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I, no I, and I, I respect your point of view, but if, uh, this is what I'm, I'm Please, noticing. Yeah. Why is Frank Slutman not running Snowflake? Yeah. You know, why, why did Samsung change the head of the engineering for chips to be an engineer? Because they were losing out to NVIDIA. So I, I just feel like head of uh, data breaks, uh, just all the heads now are technical. And if you're not technical, then your error is over. Yeah. In my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I good. could be wrong. <laughs> and and if I could, I, I also have a standard answer to that, which is, you know, uh, it's business, and technology both said both we are required in the early days most of people who become cdo are already have ibm technical background so it's easy for them to get into business side and the business people they pick up some uh, technical side so business and technology goes hand by hand yes, with hand completely okay. but so, above yeah. that it's something even more important for yeah. cdo yeah people skill yeah it, yeah. uh, it's uh, at the end of the day, uh, the CDO's job is to shepherd various organizations uh, towards a common goal. It's a very political job to some extent. That's, I think, uh, really important. So yes, people skills are probably the most important. Uh, but what has really bothered me over the years, uh, not this is not new, I actually haven't thought about this in years, I used to be amazed how uh, the CDO role would, would be filled up by some career executive. So you were a CRO, now you're kind of not <coughs> enjoying that role, okay, I've become CDO. You would never do that to CFO. CFO had to be trained in finance, but the CIO and the, you could just, they were like fungible roles. Kind of like the CEO though. Right, <laughs> you know, the yeah. CEO sometimes they're salespeople. Yes, sometimes correct. they're finance correct. people. So it kind of depends yeah. on the role. Yeah. Yeah. I think culture yeah. is the most important. Correct. And so you've got to build a data culture, one that in is a, focused on in the context of that each company. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. All right, guys, we we got, we got to wrap. Rich, I'll give you the final word. What What do you hope to achieve at this year's uh, CDO IQ? Uh, what What's the outcome that would delight you? Uh, I'm. Um, I tell people I'm a tourist now because now they are all the ambassadors, they all want to you know, shed light on the data field. And this year is data and AI together. And we have thousands of people around the world. What, uh, again, I would like to see down the road this year and as well down the road, it's CTO as I broadly defined in every organization. It's super critical as, as we come into AI age. Well, congratulations on what you've built and uh, really appreciate it. Sanjeev. We'll Thank see you, you all the, yeah. the rest of Thank this week. So we got some great guests. Keep it right yeah. here. You're watching theCUBE uh, from CDOIQ in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Be right back. <laughs>